Let's start with a look at the computer model. We'll turn off all this other stuff. The next step in the build is to get this concrete floor over the basement. We plan to pour the concrete over this styrofoam formwork called quad deck. If we run a cup plane through the model, you can see that these styrofoam deck planks interlock to form a continuous pan floor that will hold the concrete. When the concrete is poured into these forms, it takes on the shape and forms I-beams, which are structurally efficient. The other holes in the forms are for running electrical or plumbing, while also saving on materials. When the job is done, the styrofoam forms are just left in place as 8 inches of built-in insulation. If we look from above, you can see that the planks span between the load-bearing walls and radiate from that central wall at 45 degrees to minimize the maximum span required. After a long story that I'll save for the website, the materials cut to order were delivered. The delivery time was a surprise, so I had to rush out there at 7am with my 10 year old to unload an 18 wheeler with no loading dock. We had to use a 13 foot ladder just to reach the materials. David was a trooper and we got it done, sorry no footage, but I really couldn't have done it without him, it was really definitely needed two people. After the truck left we used the skid steer and what little energy we had left to take the quad deck panels up around the back of the house. A little while later, Sherry and Michael also arrived to help out. We ended up with quite a large stack of materials that ended up sitting there for three months while I tried to get the crew out to install it. Just for fun, here are two of the pieces put together. You can see the ends of the steel reinforcement that runs the lengths of the planks. When they did finally come out, the first day started with setting up the scaffolding. I had expected some sort of custom shoring with aluminum beams like I'd seen in the brochure, so this low tech was a bit of a surprise, but it worked. The cost of the 4x6 beams was also a surprise, and not included in the quote. Basically they used a level, and adjusted the feet of the scaffolds to level out the 4x6 beams between the walls. At this point they're adding a piece of 3 quarter inch board. I didn't understand why, so I went up and asked them, and it turned out that they just misread the plans. We straightened it all out and they took it off. We leveled the beams so they could move on to the next section. The second day they started adding the actual quad deck material. These pieces were cut to length at the factory but they still required a lot of trimming to get the actual shape required. They mostly just used measuring tape and a sawzall. Once placed, Dan would push the new piece up against the previous and Brian would run downstairs and screw it into place from below toenail style through the beams and into the steel reinforcement. This keeps the boards tightly together so the force of the concrete can't separate them. While they are doing all this, I was working on my laptop in the camper. I have solar power and a hotspot on my phone, so it's great. I actually had a couple video conferences on my laptop and I took the groups for quick virtual tours after the meetings. After my work day was over, the guys are not quite done yet, so I put in a little time into polishing the concrete ribs, but that'll be a separate video. They cut this last piece backwards, so they had to cut it again the other way. It was not a huge problem because they had lots of other little trim pieces that they could glue in there later, but it was the end of the second day. The next day involves some extra cutting of the stuff polystyrene to expand that mid wall. Concrete needs to pass between the styrofoam to directly load the walls below. This corner is cut out for the stair header. The wood board will hold up the concrete around the rebar reinforcement. This view from below was interesting, but only three more boards and they were done with day three. On the last day, they returned with a third guy, Adam, to help put in the rebar. The plans called for number five rebar at the bottom of that I-beam. Then they put two pieces of number 3 rebar along each plank. The transverse number 3 rebar is not really in the plans, but it was just added to get as a spacer so they could set that number 4 rebar the right height above each groove. I'd taken this afternoon off work so I could get a start on laying the radiant floor. I started with spraying out the plan right on the quad deck. This makes it much easier later. Then Sherry and I got started with laying the pecs too. 
We'll show the rest of that in pouring the concrete floor in part two of the video. In the meantime, here are some picks. Here's the deck at the end of the second day. You can see that it's barely resting on the wall. This is so that the concrete will sit as wide as possible on the wall. But, a surprise for me, I still needed to build the formwork around the perimeter to keep the concrete in. Apparently that was not included in the quote. Here you can see a ventilation duct that I placed in the floor while the guys were at lunch on the third day. Here's a view from underneath. You can see that they braced any planks that extended beyond the shoring, just to keep that concrete from pushing those ends down. Nine cans of spray foam were used to fill in the little gaps and prevent leaks. We'll finish up the setup and pour the concrete in a separate video.